to something. I mean, I know that all inventors are flaky. I knew that going in. But Larry Vaughn, I never thought he was that far out that he would blow a brilliant idea for the sake of an ego trip. Mr. Newton, do you really believe it's an ego trip? Now, shouldn't Larry be the best judge of whether his invention is ready? Mason, this isn't the first deal I ever put together. My experience goes way back. And I found out a long time ago, the best way to scuttle a perfect proposition is to let it come out too soon. I understand how you feel. But the way these contracts are drawn, Larry has the right to announce his 3D instant camera when he, and only he, considers it ready for manufacture. But I am not arguing about his legal rights. I'm arguing about his judgment. Look, he is not meddling around some, some basement workshop with a can opener. There's been six million dollars put into this investment, and I got him the investors before there was a laboratory or a technician. He had an original idea. There aren't a lot of those around. Six months. Let him hold off six months. And that way we can be sure that we can deliver what we promised to deliver. The invitations are already out for the press announcement. So we'll cancel the invitations. Mr. Newton, the contract says... Oh, I know what the contract says. Because you fixed that very well in the small print. That my lawyer should be fired for ignoring. Now look, Mason, all I'm doing is asking you to talk to him. Get him to listen to reason. Mr. Newton, I'm Larry Vaughan's attorney. I'm not all that sure reason isn't on his side. Oh, is that right? Well, now, I'm going to tell you something. If that screwball inventor continues to go ahead with this thing, I'm going to do everything in my power to protect myself and my investors. And you can count on that. And I'll protect my client. You can count on that. Wow, what's bothering him? Now, a temperamental inventor. Well, that doesn't make sense. Larry Vaughn's a little naive. Different. But he's a pussycat. Well, maybe, but you don't have six million dollars invested in him. True. I have my millions in blue chips. Oh, Paul's outside. Uh-uh, Paul's inside. Hey, who's that fellow that just came smoking out of here? Herbert Snoopy. Yeah, who's he? Tell me, get the folder on him for Paul. Uh, never mind, I'm not that interested. I want you to read it. Then look into the financial structure for Larry Vaughan's invention. Find out who all the investors are, how many shares they have. Now, wait a minute, Perry. I didn't come in here looking for more work. Hmm? Matter of fact, I wanted to ask you for more time on that murder case you got on the docket for next month. I got 12 operatives on the case, four of them out of town, and I got to go to San Francisco tomorrow. I can't give you more time. You'll have to get it from one of your other clients. Now, wait a minute. Paul, I need you to get on this right away. Herbert Newton is not what Della would call a pussycat. I want to be absolutely certain there's no way he and the other investors could possibly seize control. You know, one of these days, I'm going to say no to you and make you like it. Are you still here? Della, how would you like to work over the weekend? That Lake Tahoe. Mason. Well, I thought 
thought you were a prowler. Oh, hello, Dell. It's good to see you. Hi, hello, Larry. Larry. I'm sure glad you could come out here tonight. I don't know why Newton's so upset. All I need now is one nice, big promotion campaign. Well, here it is. It's as simple as that. One minute, and you know all about it. Now, that's why it works. Here's how it works. Della, get right over there next to Perry. I want to take a good one. Now, smile for me real big. There you go. Now, I think this is going to surprise you. Larry, that's amazing. I can't believe it. A perfect 3D color picture in the time it took us. The industrial and commercial applications of this are absolutely unlimited. Has Herbert Newton seen this? I guess a half a dozen times. You think he'd be pressing you to put it on the market? It's sensational. Look, Perry is ready right now. Hello? Now, you sure ain't much for answering letters, are you, Buddy Rowe? Who is this? Now, come on. You gonna try and hold out on the poor sucker who took the rap for you? Uh, what number are you calling, friend? Uh, you must have the wrong number. I don't know who you are. Old Brock's got the number they told me to call. Now, you meet me tomorrow at Roper's Water Ski School. And you better be there, or you're going to be in big trouble. What's going on around here? First a prowler, now this. Oh, what the devil's going on? Who are you? What are you, what, what are you doing in my house? I'm Larry Vaughn. I'm afraid this is my house. Since when? Well, since three days ago when I paid Nate Morrissey for it. Oh, so you're in cahoots with that dirty, dealing, double clothing husband of mine. Who are you? I'm Perry Mason, Mr. Vaughn's attorney. This is my secretary, Della Street. Oh, well, you better be a good attorney because this squad is going to need one. You're Nate Morrissey's wife. Ex. Ex, soon to be ex, I hope and I pray. Nate's been salting everything away, and he's been telling everybody that he's, he's been losing everything gambling, and now he's trying to steal my house, house away from me with, with, with your help. Look, Mrs. Morrissey. Now listen, now just listen. How would you feel if you drove all the way from Baja, dead beat, and you were hoping to, to, to jump in the tub and take a nice long bath and then, and then crawl into your own bed? I come home and I find my, my house in, in bed. Hey, you're not bed. listening, lady. This is not your house. This is my house. Where are my things? What'd you do with all my things? Now that I'm here, I'm going to stay here until hell freezes over. Uh, Mrs. Morrissey. Listen, just don't tell me uh, about anything I sign, and don't tell me about title companies, and just don't tell me about anything. Sue me. Sue me. That'll be just perfect because that'll smoke all my husband's assets out. I made my decision. I am staying in this house. Uh, Mrs. Morrissey, I didn't arrange the purchase, but I'm sure your attorney... ...will tell you that you cannot evict me from this half of the house because this half of the house is built on property I owned before I was married. And this half is also ne Nevada, and that's California, and there's a state dividing line. Look at that sign right that goes right down the middle of the house. Larry. Larry, the state dividing line part of it is right, but I closed an escrow three days ago. I paid $100,000 for this house, and it's my house. Look, Larry, why don't you check into a hotel tonight? We'll clear all this up in the morning. You're my lawyer, and I'm not leaving. Well, I'm not leaving. <sighs> well, Larry, if you won't leave, and you won't leave, then obviously you're going to have to share this house tonight. I suppose this is the uh, dividing line, Larry. The California half is yours. Shades of Solomon. Well, what happens if he doesn't stay on his side? What happens if you don't stay on your side? That's a chance you'll both have to take. Because my taste doesn't run to You're both strong. reasonable, oh. fair-minded. You don't know me. We're going back to town, certain that for the night, your problem is solved. Della, if you'll leave Nevada and join me in California, we'll say good night. cost me ten dollars to win 80 cents. I'll buy you a cup of coffee. Hello? 
No, couldn't manage it. Complications. Talk louder. I can hardly hear you. Sounds like you're whispering. Don't sweat it. I'll meet the schedule. Now, where do I reach you for the final payment? Okay, good. Thanks. too good for you. I'm gonna sue you for malicious damage to the property. I've asked your husband to help straighten out this situation. I told him I haven't been able to straighten you out for years. And you won't until you show my lawyer all your hidden assets. Just open up the real books on the business and let's, let's see what's in those safe deposit boxes registered under aliases. Uh, Mrs. Morrissey. Uh, Mrs. Morrissey. Try Pat. I can't stand the Morrissey. Pat's. Larry Vaughan has spent the past five years developing a revolutionary new camera. Now he's demonstrating it at a press conference tomorrow at the Chateau Neuf. Good, that'll get him out of here. Oh, oh no, I leave, she locks me out. Nothing doing, I'm holding the press conference right here. Now look, Larry. No, I have my charts and I have my camera. I'm holding the demonstration right here. Oh, and that uh, red ribbon will make a great conversation piece for all the reporters. Larry, I don't think you should hold the press conference here. Uh, Pat. His success with the camera should be important to you, too. You and your husband own a percentage, don't you? We do. Well, now, isn't that interesting? Look, I am going to get a hold of myself, Perry. And I am holding the demonstration right here. Well, that's great with me now that I know that I've got a piece of the action. And I'll just invite all the reporters over for punch and cookies. No, my darling. The only way you'll get your hands on anything else that's mine is over my dead body. Don't think I haven't considered it. that louse I'm married to. You know, he's hidden every, every penny. This house is about the only thing I can hold on to. It's my house. Maybe half of it. Oh, geez, a little bit more of this. Ah! Ooh, ooh, ooh. Don't rub your eyes. Ooh, ow. Don't rub your eyes. Now take them. Ah. Uh. Now open them slow. How would you like me to cook that um, California fish in Nevada? <sighs> mm -hmm. Have you made a killing yet on the five cent machine? No, but I'm closing in. Barry. Mr. Newton. I wasn't sure you'd come. I wasn't sure either. You know what that crazy inventor's done now? Well, he's not only going ahead with the press conference, but he called our PR firm. He's flying up the entire press party, wind them and dine them at this hotel, then bust them to his house on the lake. Yes, I'm aware of that. And that gives me just 24 hours to talk some sense into him. Mr. Newton, I've seen the camera. I think he's right. Why hold up the announcement? Well, if for no other reason than to get that woman out of the house. Can you imagine what that would look like in print? No, sir, he has to postpone that announcement. All right, now, what's so urgent? Me. 
wife. My wife is in town, and if she sees us, she'll put two and two together. I miss you, Nate. I miss you, too. An old friend of yours stopped by last night, checking around. Somebody told him I knew you, but I didn't let on how well. You two gonna talk or play, huh? Let's go. What did he ask? He wanted to know where you hung out, if you lived alone, things like that. What did he want? What you owed him, darling. He said it was from years ago, way back when. This guy sounded mean and tough. You find out his name? Yeah, he just said to call him Brock. Brock? Brock. Mr. Perry Mason or Miss Della Street. Telephone, please. Uh, yes, operator, Della Street. I'm answering your page. Hello, Paul. I'm in San Francisco, Della. I'll see you two tomorrow. I got some interesting information on some of the investors in Larry Vaughn's camera. Oh, which one? Nate Morrissey. I met his wife. And believe me, his wife is the least of his troubles. <laughs> That's how the report ends. At 2.41 a.m., the lights went out. Get to the point, Nate. You can't come out here this morning. Of course I can. I might even liven up Vaughn's press conference. Oh, even you're not that much of a little house. Look, I'll, I'll, um, I'll meet you anywhere you want. <sighs> Why drag an innocent bystander into this? Because all's fair in love and divorce. Now you sign that settlement, or I'll introduce you to the press. Okay, I'll see you at the house. Yeah. Well, well, Buddy Rowe. I finally caught you in. Look, I don't know who you are, but you turn right around and walk back out of here. Oh, all in good time. All in good time, Buddy Rowe. After I get what I come for. No. I'm Brock. 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 I never heard of you. Uh. uh <laughs> now don't you try and snow job me, Buddy Rowe. I don't know, when I made that deal in Nam to take the rap for everybody. Word was that you'd have my payoff money when I got out. Three years in Leavenworth. That's a mighty hard time. I earned all that green that I got coming, Buddy Rowe. All right, all right. You'll get what you got coming. You can say that again. I'll get mine. Or you get yours. I can't just give it to you just like that. I... You have to be patient. I've been patient long enough. Now, I've been working for fat back and greens while you've been eating fish eggs. Now, I'm going to stand here and listen while you tell me when I collect. And if your story don't add up, Buddy Rowe, you're going to be in big trouble. Big trouble. Paul, you're certain about that background information on Morrissey? Absolutely. My military contacts are never wrong. How he managed to wiggle out of that PX scandal without doing time, I'll never know. Mason. I just hung up on our eccentric genius. I gave it one more try, but he refuses to stop this press conference. Now, can't you do something? Mr. Newton, can't you look on the bright side for just once? I'd say chances are very good. You want a piece of a gold mine. General says they're harmful for your health. Not that it matters much because there's a 25G contract on you. Now that we 
be people all over this place any minute. Now you shoot and they'll hear it. I'm going to walk out that door. Sign marked the actual border between California and Nevada. The state line runs right through the middle of this house. <laughs> so? So you're with the El Dorado County, California Sheriff's Department, right? Uh-huh, that's right. Lieutenant, your jurisdiction ends in the exact center of this living room. Now, if you cross the line to take custody of Larry Vaughan, you'll be making an illegal arrest in the state of Nevada. Well, I'm sure you know the law, Mr. Mason. But you don't know me. There's no way I'm going to let a murderer get away. If I have to extradite, I will. Lieutenant, we can work this out to save you the week's extradition would take. All right, I'll listen. Just give me a few minutes to talk to my client in Nevada. Then I'll bring him back across the line and surrender him to you. Fair enough? Well, you are his lawyer. And you say the state line goes right through here, huh? Okay. Go to it. Thanks. Hello, Perry. No, I didn't do it. All right. Tell me what happened. I didn't even know he was in the house. I came in and... and there he was. Where's Pat? Uh, she's disappeared. She wouldn't do that. Perry, I think I've fallen in love with her. You've got to find her for me. Uh, Paul Drake's already looking for her. Let's get down to some facts. Uh, you say you're in love with Morrissey's wife. You had a dispute with him over this house. You were found standing over his body. You're in trouble. Will you stop it? I couldn't kill anybody. Where did the knife come from? I took it off the butcher block and left it by the door the other night. When you thought you were to prowl her? Yeah, the night you and Della came. I gave the police a report about it yesterday. You gotta find her for me, Barry, please. Did you change your phone number when you moved in last week? No, I... I didn't remember. That strange call you received the night I was here. It could have been meant for the former resident, Nate Morrissey. Well, he said he wanted to meet me somewhere, uh, close by. Hmm. Brock, some water ski school. You about through in there, Mr. Mason? Oh, Perry. You're... Find her for me, please. I'll be right out, Lieutenant. All right, remember, don't say anything unless I'm there. But even then, only what I tell you. I know. Let's go. Operator, I want to call another room in the hotel. I don't know the room number, but the name... I don't think she likes women. 
after an hour beside her in the beauty salon under the dryer, all I came away with was a $20 tab. Oh, and the fact that the manicurist thinks Pat Morrissey killed her husband. Some 20 bucks is cheap. I dropped 200 a day. And while I was losing, she was a perfect charmer. As soon as I quit, she didn't even know my name. I've got to get some more nickels. Jenny's a shill for the house. What other services she performs, I don't know. She didn't do anything else for me. Well, she gave you the lead on Brock, which ties in with that phone call Larry got the first night Dell and I were here. Well, we'll see how valuable Jenny's information is when I check out Brock at the ski school tomorrow. Where are you going? I'll try my luck. Allow me. Scotch. Only if one thing's understood, I'm not for sale. Although I might consider a long-term lease. Uh, could we go somewhere quiet? Discuss it. House would take a dim view of that. You lead the lambs to the slaughter. I show the suckers it's easy to win. Is it easy? If you know how. Come on, when I play double zero, cash in. What's your bet? Come on, What's your bet? What's your bet? All bets now. No more bet. 27, red, high. Place your bet. All bets now. All right. Number bets. 23, red, high. Place your bets. Place your bets. All bets now. All bets now. Number eight, black, even. Number nine, all bets now. Double zero. Place your bets. Thirty-three black, hot, red. Short term lease. Excuse me, sir. I'll get you a drink. Thank you, sir. Twenty-three red, hot. Scotch on the rock, champagne cocktail. No more I think I can really use that drink now. What was that all about? You want a statement, son? Duke Armstrong, this, this, this guy I've known for years. Vegas, Reno. Somebody put a bullet in him upstairs. Just a little while ago, maybe while we were sitting here. What did he do to deserve that? I don't know. Dead. Just the other day, he told me he had this big payday coming. And he wanted to take me to Bermuda with him. What'd you tell him? I just laughed and told him I was getting married. When did you see him last? Yesterday. No, the day before. We were talking about Swank Holmes on the lake. He asked me all these questions about Nate Morrissey's place. And now they're both dead. What did he want to know about Nate? Hmm. 19. How to get to the house, what the layout was, where the neighbors were. Tell me something. Why are you pumping me? Habit. I'm an attorney. <laughs> well, I knew a cop or a lawyer the minute we started to gamble. Oh. You watched me, not the wheel. <laughs> I won't make that mistake again. I'll bet you don't make many. Jenny, I hope Nate had the good sense to appreciate you. 
Oh, sure, he appreciated me. He appreciated me and he hated his wife. But she's going to rake in all the chips and all I end up with is 15% of some far-out camera gadget he put in my name. Jenny, that far-out camera gadget just might make you a millionaire. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, great. <laughs> Sergeant Brockhurst? That was a long time ago. I'm trying to forget I have a war uniform. Mm, don't much blame you. For that PX scandal and three years in Leavenworth. No. You're a fuzz, ain't you? Well, I'm clean, so just knock it off. You took the rap for all three of them, didn't you? And then your good buddy, Nate Morris, he took custody of the money. And now he's dead. Look, buddy, Row. I took the rap. That much is true. But as far as Morrissey is concerned, I never knew him. I knew there was somebody at the top, but I never caught up with him. I've got a parking attendant. The Chateau Nova says you did. You left there with Morrissey just a couple of hours before he was killed. Okay. I don't know why I lied about it. I did see Morrissey, but just that one time. I dropped him off on my way to work. But if you're trying to hint that I killed him, you don't make sense. The guy that knocked Morrissey off cost me a bundle. I'll never collect that 50 grand he owed me now. It's going to be a lousy weekend. We're up against a blank wall. And we got three people, all of them had motives for killing Morrissey. Brock? It's Brock Hurst. Pat Morrissey and uh, maybe Jenny. If Nate Morrissey was killed on contract by Jenny's friend Duke. I'll bet on it and give you odds. The prowler late at night, thinking Morrissey still lived there. The questions he asked Jenny. The questions she said he asked. All right, let's look at Jenny. Now, she had a lot more to lose by Morrissey's death than she had to gain by it. She wanted his money. She wanted to marry him. Brock stood to lose his cut of the PX racket, so why would he want to kill him? Or pay to have him killed? Why kill the killer? To get out of paying off? All right, so who's left? Pat Morrissey. And she's the only one who stood to gain by Nate Morrissey's death. Yes, Gertie. Herbert Newton. Hmm? Paul, you've got to find Pat Morrissey. Preferably before the police do. All right. Put some more people on him. Put him through, Gertie. The Drake Detective Agency always strives to give satisfaction. Now, sometimes it takes us a while. Hello, Mr. Newton. Whereas, there are times... Mr. Newton, I'll have to get back to you. So that's why I came to you, uh... I just found out that Larry had been arrested. Well, facing a murder charge in a small town jail is bad enough. But Larry's also had you on his mind. Why? Because he's in love with you. Oh, brother. That's what I was afraid of. Larry's a, a sweet, kind of naive. Why did you run after the murder? I ran before. And I did it for Larry. I, I knew if I stayed, Nate would make a big thing out of it with me as the Scarlet Woman and Larry as a... Well, you know. I'm not sure that rationale makes sense. Did to me. Well, there's another rationale, you know. That your husband showed up and you had the perfect way to get rid of him. Hey, now, you wait a minute. You just hold it right there. I wasn't found with the body. My fingerprints weren't on that knife. She's right about that. Besides, you know how much it's going to cost me? Somebody sticking that carving knife in Nate? How will I ever find the money he hid from me? What banks is it in? Under what names? Or uh, how was it invested? Sure, I hated him. But not enough to pay that, that much for the luxury of killing him. No motive is a pretty good defense, Pat. You bet it is. Well, I'll scratch another one. Nobody had a motive for killing Nate Morrissey. We're flying up to Tahoe late this afternoon. Larry's preliminary hearing is tomorrow morning in Placerville. We may need your testimony in court. <sighs> okay. So this here is the killing knife, huh? Yes, sir, it is. Oh, your boys find any prints on it? Yes, sir, they did. They were the fingerprints of the accused. Now, Lieutenant, just exactly what did you do when you arrived on the scene? Well, the first thing we did was uh, clear the room of the reporters. Then we took uh, eyewitness affidavits. Yes, that's uh, People's Exhibits uh, 1 through uh, 4. Yes, sir. They all swore that as they came in the room, they saw the accused beside their body. Okay, Lieutenant, that'll do. Now, Your Honor, if uh, our eminent 
defense counsel and go along this old country boy and waive his cross-examination, I think I can wind up this business pronto. Mr. Mason, that suits you? Well, pronto is a little fast for me, Your Honor, but I only have a few questions for the witness. Go ahead. Lieutenant, is it possible to tell when the fingerprints were put on this knife? No, sir. So if the accused handled this knife earlier, then someone wearing gloves made use of it to kill Nate Morrissey. The fingerprints of the accused and no one else would still be there. Yes, sir. Lieutenant, you said you had to clear the press out of the murder room. Is it possible that before your arrival, some of the evidence may have been destroyed or become contaminated? Well, I, uh, yes, could be. Oh, Your Honor, I'd like to make sure that the lieutenant understands Mr. Mason's use of the word contaminated. I know what it means. It means could the reporters have messed up some clues that would have pointed to somebody else? And the answer is yes. Lieutenant, you took the eyewitness testimony. Did any one of them claim that they had seen the accused kill Nate Morrissey? No, sir. Thank you, Lieutenant. Mr. Hoover? That's pretty good. That is pretty darn good. Now, uh, this is the house and the lake's up here. Whereabouts are you? Yeah, right here, above the house. Right there. Now, uh, Mr. Morrissey hired me to uh, keep his wife under surveillance to uh, get evidence of any uh, immoral conduct. Well, did you succeed in getting what you were hired to get? Yes, sir. Like my report shows, the uh, accused and Mrs. Morrissey uh, spent two nights together. Objection, Your Honor. The witness is referring to his report, which is not in evidence. Sustained. All right, let me see if I can rephrase the question in uh, law school perfection so I don't offend the uh, sensibility of counsel. Uh, Mr. Coberly, when you were on that cold hillside watching just what, if uh, anything, did you observe? I saw the accused and Mrs. Morrissey uh, Retire for the night. Together. Objection. Calling for a conclusion. <laughs> now, Your Honor, how much of a conclusion is this? The man saw what he saw. The two of them, they went in together and they turned out the lights. However, if our eminent attorney wants to believe that when the lights went out, they went their separate ways, that's all right by me because I admire the purity of his thoughts. Your Honor, although I am entertained by Mr. Hooper's wit and flattered by his willingness to crown me with eminence, we are dealing with murder here. And I object to all assumptions, uh, regardless of the district attorney's qualifications, to speculate in that area. Objection sustained. Oh, I'm finished with the witness. Mr. Mason? No cross. Witness may step down. Your Honor, I think that just about wraps it uh, up. There's the physical evidence, the eyewitness uh, testimony, the eternal triangle motive. I move that the accused be bound over for trial in Superior Court. Your Honor, the defense intends to call witnesses on the issue of whether there is sufficient evidence. Oh, Judge, Your Honor, now I don't rightly know how they handle uh, these uh, preliminary hearings down there in Los Angeles, but I would assume that California state law applies even there. See, the purpose of such proceedings is not to determine guilt or innocence. Your Honor, this time I'll accept Mr. Hooper's assumption, but the defense has the right, even in Los Angeles, to present evidence. You do, Mr. Mason. Can you wrap it up in the next uh, hour? Uh, no, Your Honor, I can't. Then court will adjourn for the day. We'll open at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. All witnesses under subpoena are directed to return at that time. Court stands adjourned. I didn't object to a little hearsay evidence in order to, you know, speed things up. If you went and you stretch things anyway. <laughs> You didn't mind my baiting you a little bit there, but you see, I know something on old Matt Taylor. He's a fine judge, but uh, he wanted out of here today. I was sure he did. It's the first day of trout season. During recess, I saw him tying flies. Oh, you should have been there. The two of them going at each other. <laughs>
Hey, Della, just been telling me how you met your match in court today. Hey, I didn't say that. I ought to put you under oath and let Hooper cross-examine you. Uh, Let's eat. I'm starved. It's a good idea. Thanks. Oh, I forgot. Herbert Newton. He called and he said he'd do anything to help Larry. Well, I'll give him credit for one thing. Now that Larry's in trouble, he's apparently forgotten his animosity. Yeah. Sure. He's got a good thing going. Oh, what does that mean? Well, I've been checking with the investors. Now, Newton's been at them all lately, trying to buy back stock. I guess he thinks the camera's going to be pretty big. He even went to Nate Morrissey. He got turned down, though. Do you have all the investors listed yet? Well, the list isn't complete. With the uh, figures on the Atlanta block, that's 15% of the total. The Detroit Cleveland Merchandising Syndicate, that's 22%. Houston, 10. Larry's got 40. So that's, that's 87%. I suppose Newton has the rest in small amounts. 87%? Mm-hmm. You see, Newton's got big bank backing. I guess he's still trying to buy up stock. In fact, apparently, he's offering cash for small blocks of stock. He went to his bank in Laguna Beach, took out $25,000. I guess the deal fell through because two days later, he put it back. Murder or no murder, business is business. Why was Nate Morrissey killed? At least four people besides our client may have felt he needed killing. But all four of them apparently had more to lose than to gain by his death, whatever their personal feelings were. Sergeant Dean... Did Duke Armstrong have a criminal record? No, sir. But he had been a suspect in a contract murder in Gaffney, South Carolina. Hmm. We appreciate you bringing this exhibit from Nevada. Can you tell us where it was found? Beside Duke Armstrong's body, he was apparently reading it while talking to the Chateau Neuf switchboard operator. I see an item circled in pencil. Yes, sir. It's an article on the murder of Nathan Morrissey detailing the way the accused was found and the people present at the time. I think your name is listed, too. Hmm. Sergeant Dean, you said the murdered man, Duke Armstrong, was actually talking to the hotel operator when he was killed. Yes, sir. He was asking her to connect him with someone's room, uh, somebody staying at the hotel. But she didn't hear the name? No, sir. The shot came too quick. The operator called hotel security, and they found Armstrong dead. Your Honor, let me approach the bench. All right, gentlemen. Your Honor, I am perfectly willing to let Mr. Mason get his licks in, but what all this talk about another murder in another state has to do with what we're supposed to be doing here, uh, I am puzzled. Your Honor, all the evidence points to the fact that the two murders are inseparably linked. How? The stabbing of Nate Morrissey would seem not to be a crime of passion at all, but a professional execution. Mr. Mason, you know, when it comes to making assumptions, you're beating me halfway to Sunday. Your Honor, the accused, Larry Vaughan, reported a prowler trying to break into his house only two nights before the murder of Nate Morrissey. And his call is on record at the sheriff's substation. I have a witness in court who can help us determine the identity of that prowler. Hmm. Duke asked me a lot of questions about Nate's house. I don't know why. Do you know how long Duke Armstrong planned to be at Lake Tahoe? Yes. He was trying to get me to take a trip with him after he finished his business and got paid for his work. I was supposed to be ready to go the next day. Why didn't you accept the offer? He was nothing to me. And besides, I was, in a way, engaged to Nate, Mr. Morrissey. Did you have any tangible evidence that Nate Morrissey intended to marry you? I don't know what you want me to say. I want you to tell the truth, that's all. Why did you believe Nate Morrissey intended to marry you? Oh, I see. You mean about the camera? Well, he, he put his 15% of the camera in my name. That much? And in your name, not his wife's? Look, Mr. Mason, if you don't believe me, why don't you ask the man he bought it from? It was all worked out properly and legally. Yes, this is a copy of our standard agreement. I had it transferred at Mr. Morrissey's request. So Mrs. Morrissey has no claim whatever on this 15%? Well, not that I can see. The agreement with your other principal investors, the Atlanta Block, the Detroit Cleveland Group, the people in Houston, their agreements are similarly drawn. Exact duplicates. Will you explain something to me, Mr. Newton? Your principal investors add up to 87%. 
And when you include Morrissey's 15, it comes to 102%. And that doesn't even take into account your own percentage of the camera. Or the percentage owned by the small investors not listed. Well, uh, obviously you've made some kind of a mistake, Mr. Mason. No, Mr. Newton. Isn't it more likely that you made the mistake of not believing Larry Vaughan would succeed in developing his camera, so you sold more than 100%? No. Isn't it true that you then compounded that first mistake with one mistake after another? Wait a minute. You're trying to use me to get your client off the hook. Objection, Your Honor. Mr. Mason is attacking his own witness. Now, this witness is not on trial for stock manipulation or anything else. Your Honor, I can show a connection. I'll overrule the objection, but Mr. Mason, be careful you don't overstep. You know there are only two ways to avoid going to jail for stock fraud. One was to persuade Larry Vaughan not to announce his camera until you had time to buy up these extra shares. Now, when that failed, you had only one alternative. And that alternative led to the murder of Nate Morrissey. What are you trying to do to me? I hardly knew that man. And I had no reason. That's right. No one around Nate Morrissey could possibly benefit from his death. The tragic irony is that Nate Morrissey was not the intended victim. Larry Vaughan is the man you marked for murder. Now look, I am here under oath, and I swear to you, I swear! Is it not a fact that you withdrew $25,000 from your own account to pay the bill for the services of Duke Armstrong, a contract killer? No. Is it not also a fact that when the killer realized he killed the wrong man, he tried to call you, but you surprised him in his room, murdered him, then redeposited that $25,000 in your own account? That's not true. I, I never wanted to hit Larry. I swear. I swear. But you made me do it. Order. Because you wouldn't make him hold back on the camera. Because you helped him stay in that house. Order. And you, you boxed in Morrissey so that he felt he would have to go up there. You had your detective digging at my stockholders. And you got to Morrissey's woman. And you forced me, you forced me to kill Duke in order to protect myself. You, you did it. Order. You, you, you. Order. The witness will be placed under restraint and allowed to call an attorney. Court will recess for 30 minutes. Thank you, Perry. Perry. Would you look at that? A babe in arms. Oh, Larry might just surprise you. You think so? I've got a strong notion that your client's going to need a good lawyer again. Mm -hmm. Soon. I think he's going to trouble. Now, Mr. Hooper, if people stayed out of trouble, we'd be out of business. <laughs>